This product is a flop. The idea is dumb. It's a solution in search of a problem. In basically every Apple Vision, MetaQuest, VR, AR, whatever related discussion, you will find plenty of takes like these. I won't waste your time. I think these people are all wrong. Despite everything that happened and how hard it seemingly will be to make this technology mainstream, I still care deeply about spatial computing, or XR, or however you want to call it. In this video, I don't want to make predictions. I don't want to say that the Apple Vision will kill the desktop in 10 years or anything like that, because frankly nobody can say for sure. The world, especially right now, is too unpredictable and complex. Depending on how the economy goes or the breakthroughs that happen, the scenario could change drastically at any moment. What I want to argue is why I think special computing is worthy of being explored what are the problems it solves, and crucially, why I want it to go mainstream. This is why you should care about spatial computing. Let's start with how it uniquely improves user experience. For all my examples, I will use Vision Pro and Vision OS because they are no doubt the most polished this whole technology stack has ever been. But I am talking generally. All this stuff could be implemented by anyone. Kinda by definition, spatial computing is by far the most versatile computing paradigm. It can support and replicate basically all the various input systems we are used to in some way. You could, for example, use a Vision Pro exactly like a classic personal computer computer with keyboard and mouse, or take an app window to use like a giant iPad. This in addition to all the unique configurations that only work here. On Vision OS you can control apps by using hand gestures, and decide where to focus by simply looking at things. Conceptually developers have never had this much freedom when it comes to how their apps should be controlled, which doesn't mean that everything must be weird and funky, but that it can be when beneficial. In this paradigm you are not constrained by the barriers of a screen, or or the size of a touchpad. Not even the posture of the user is a problem. You can make an app that requires the user to stand or lie down, one with controls spread all over a room, or all over the user's body, at least in theory. Vision OS currently has more limitations for apps in the shared space, essentially while multitasking. But none of this is an intrinsic limit of the technology, it's merely a design decision that can be changed at any moment. If having this much freedom with app design is important, you might be one wondering why no other device ever had it. And the reason is simple, it wouldn't have been possible. Let's take eye tracking as an example. You could theoretically do it on a phone or a computer, but it would be way harder. The camera may have blind spots, requiring the user to always keep them in mind. Ever used your phone in class under a desk? That wouldn't work here. All the sensors Vision OS uses are worn by the user, because they are all on the headset itself. The cameras allowing eye tracking to work will never be unable to find the user's eyes. They move together. Spatial computing allows more freedom of space. This is kind of an obvious consequence, but it's true. You know how most computers sold are laptops? People value portability, they want to access all their stuff wherever. Sure, the Apple Vision Pro isn't as compact as a MacBook yet, but that can change eventually. It happened in the past, and we know of ways for it to happen again. Something that doesn't change is the size of laptop displays. Despite everything, they are still tiny. I've seen proposals of using foldable or rollable displays to make them bigger on demand, but frankly this technology is nowhere near ready yet. Even if it was, come on, how does it compete with this? When it comes to portability, yes, you can use laptops outside, that's the entire point, but it's never a great experience. Professionals will often want to use external monitors, and outdoor lighting is a problem too, as it's just too strong. Both of these problems simply don't exist with special computing. You can virtually have the same exact experience at home, in a studio, on a plane, or outside. For how much people love to say that headsets are isolating, there is no other computing platform that is this compatible with touching grass anyway. So far, I've mostly talked about improvements to speed and productivity, which are very important, but far from the only improvements spatial computing brings to the table. There's a bunch of stuff I want to mention, but some of it is simply too complex for just being a section of this video. I definitely want to continue this discussion in the future, but the next feature I want to mention is something that is truly unique to this space, that can't work anywhere else, and that in my opinion is still severely underrated. To understand the impact of this feature, we need to analyze the present. 
What do people do on computers? The origin of computers has to do with information. In some languages that aren't English, like Italian for example, the direct translation of computer science is informatica, or science of information. Computers after all are information machines, devices to create, manipulate, transmit and display information. As a species, thanks to language, we've always had this incredible advantage of being able to communicate extremely complex and detailed ideas. But we've never been this exposed to so much information from all over the world all the time. It's a relatively new thing, which is why the current age is called the information age. It's a revolution that changed everything, and unless something truly cataclysmic happens, there's no going back. The average person is bombarded by information all the time. Between social media posts, e-commerce, news, the majority of what we see of the outside world, the parts we currently can't visit by ourselves, are experienced through text, photos and videos. So what's the big deal? The problem is that for how important all this stuff is, photography and videography are too limited. Absurdly limited. Photos lack depth. Of course, even watching a 2D photo, your brain should be able to mostly infer the perspective, but it's not remotely the same thing. In addition, photos are terrible at conveying scale. Every picture is a physical object, an object of finite size that is trying to contain an infinite space. Even digital photos have to be seen on a display or printed. The size of the photo will always be constrained by a physical support, and the scale of the subjects it depicts is always a result of that constraint plus how distant you are from it. Yes, Photographers have their ways to give an idea of how big something is supposed to be, but it's just not the same. I don't even have to tell you, right? And the limitations of photography are routinely used to lie, by the way. Just think of all those listings on Airbnb or similar platforms where rooms are made to appear bigger than they really are, using clever perspective tricks. You can watch as many photos you want about a specific building, for example, but going there physically will always be fundamentally different. Naturally, it's like this for all sorts of objects. Remember when nobody truly understood how big the PS5 actually was? What is the difference here? The atoms of the object being physically there? Not really. It's not like you have to poke the building or the PS5 or whatever to realize that you are not seeing a picture. That information, that I call presence, of how it feels to see an object at the correct scale and distance from the observer. Photography has no way to capture it. Obviously I'm not saying that photos and videos are inherently bad as formats or anything. They still have their place. Their limits make sense in a variety of situations but they are limited. The devices through which so much information is exchanged between people every day, through which so many things are experienced for the first, and in many cases all subsequent times, have the same limits. It's like writing what color each part of a grayscale image is supposed to be. You can comprehend it and memorize it, but you will always lack the intuitive, visceral understanding. Those devices and those mediums are utterly incapable of conveying these two essential types of information, and I think this is a problem. The importance of internet and instantaneous communication is not going to decrease anytime soon. We should strive to include as much of the complete context as possible when we get the chance. Spatial computing is the only paradigm that truly allows these two properties of reality to be conveyed Truthful, And I am glad that people are starting to notice it more now that Vision OS treats it as a legit feature you are supposed to use instead of a tech demo. Anyway, these are only some of the improvements special computing introduces. If you're interested, I have other videos on the topic and on similar ones. Like this one. Check it out if you want. Ciao!